talk to us about what this milestone means in terms of where and how you plan to invest and grow. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's a super exciting day for us to be listing after 10 years of really hard work by a team. We set out in the garage to, 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 with an audacious goal of imaging the whole world every day, and we've achieved that. We've got those 200 satellites up there. We're imaging the whole world every day. And as you say, there's some great use cases, like with farmers, with Google, with um, many scientists. Uh, where we're going is that this gives us the capital to invest into software, um, to uh, add analytics, to pull out information from the images, as well as sales and marketing to go after the huge market opportunity we see. Look, this is really just the tip of the iceberg of planet's potential, and so this gives us the capital to go after the rest of that. So today you sell mostly to governments and to farmers. What are the new markets that you actually see and how big are they? Well, firstly, those existing markets are huge. So we need to go after all the big ag companies, all of the governments, all of the uh, Googles of the world, all of the um, uh, energy companies, forestry companies. But the new sectors that we're going after uh, are going to be really exciting as well. So that's things like insurance, finance. Um, and, and, you know, in many of these sectors, the, the principal value of the data is huge. I mean, we, we for example, in finance, can tell um, the worldwide uh, yield of corn or soy or whatever before anyone else. We have that data. But hedge funds don't want uh, pretty pictures. They want time series calibrated data. And we haven't got all of that integrated uh, analytic feeds yet. So we've got the satellites, the data, certain analytics products, but not everything. And as we build up that software stack, we'll enable more and more users. You know, our um, colleague joined us from, uh, uh, used to be the uh, head of product at Twitter, and they had a fire hose of data. But until they had certain analytical features, it wasn't useful to a lot of the, the other companies that would buy it. We have a similar situation, a fire hose of data coming down from space. And it's our job now to make it easier and easier for more and more people to access because there's a long tail of users as well as the big uh, f companies that we're going after today. Planet has had a huge lead over rivals, but now there are more and more imaging companies stepping in, as, and we expect that to continue as the cost of entry comes down. Do you think you've moved fast enough, and do you see products beyond imaging technology? Well, certainly, I mean, look, firstly, competition is great. I mean, I think it's a, a, there's a bit of a space renaissance going on, and it's really exciting. Launch costs have come down. Satellite capability performance has gone up. I mean, we've seen the latter. Uh, the launch costs come down about 4x. The cost per capability of satellites go up about 1,000x in the last five or 10 years. A dramatic change. It's like the mainframe computer to desktop transition for IT, but for space. And it's like our internet moment. So that's really exciting. It's an unleashing a greenfield of opportunities. Planet is, is, has got a unique data set. I mean, we, as you mentioned, have the largest Earth imaging fleet, 200 satellites in operation today. They image the whole Earth every day, and that opens up these wide new markets. No one else has that, and no one has anything like that scan of the planet. And so we've got quite some years before anyone has anything like, of a similar capability. Now, Planet started off more like a nonprofit focused on environmental issues. Talk to us about the evolution to now a publicly traded company. Why did you decide that was the best and most, um, you know, opportunistic route? Uh, well, actually, we've always tried to serve both businesses and nonprofits and, and scientists and NGOs all, all the same. And the, look, the, the good thing about Planet is that our business model and our goal and mission of impact in the world are completely aligned. Even when we sell to farmers, that makes, make, that's making the crop yield more efficient, and that's stopping pushing of, 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 of stopping deforestation. The main source of deforestation is agricultural lands being expanded into forested territories. So making agriculture more efficient does a good thing for the planet. Um, so our mainstay business does good things for the planet, but also when we work with NGOs to, say, map the world's coral reefs like we did last year, and then help create marine protected areas around them. That's, of course, a direct uh, impact project as well. But they're both sort of at the same t time happening through our core business. That's why we're actually really excited to be going public as a public benefit corporation, which actually makes it the duty of the directors to care about the mission, which is basically about using space to help life on Earth, as well as shareholder and other stakeholder value. And so it's a, we're one of an early set of companies that are using this new form of a public benefit corporation as we go public. Quickly, well, what are the effects you're seeing from the supply chain crunch? How is that impacting Planet? 
That's not really impacting us. I mean, look, our n total numbers are relatively low, right? We typically launch 50 or so satellites a year. Um, so at that sort of volume, we don't uh, hit, and we can just, uh, we can just stock supply. Um, but um, I, one thing I will tell you, though, is that we can monitor those supply chains from space. Uh, so we do regularly have companies that buy our data to track where does their produce come from? Where's the ultimate source? Is that coming from a sustainable source? And this touches on ESG, because all the companies in the world are trying to track their supply chains, both a risk like the kind that you're just saying, but also to check they're from sustainable sources. And all the company, countries of the world are trying to measure their emissions. I was just at the Glasgow conference, the climate conference there, and our data is critical to all the targets being set by those companies in those countries. And so, um, uh, you know, we can actually help with that su supply chain challenge as well.